So uh, as Phil um, introduced me, I'm Tyler. Uh, I work for Red Hat, so nice to meet, um, be here. And today I'll be talking about confidential containers um, with a runtime we developed known as K-Run. Um, kind of a subtitle for this could be how we extend uh, existing container projects for confidential computing. <coughs> so to start, uh, you, know, you may ask, what is the K-Run container runtime? Um, basically, it's an extension of the C-Run uh, container runtime, which I assume uh, most here are familiar with, but it has added virtualization capabilities. So what it basically allows you to do is run a container inside of what we call a micro VM. Uh, a micro VM is a machine type, a virtual machine type, optimized for boot time and memory footprint. And because we optimize for that, uh, K-Run has a much smaller uh, memory footprint that's why we know, uh, call it a micro VM. It has a much smaller memory footprint uh, because we really only provide a thin layer of virtualization wrapping a container's workload, uh, and we only have a minimal amount of devices to kind of clamp down on that uh, memory footprint. Um, the original purpose of K-Run was to run containers inside of a virtualized context in order for um, standard container escape attacks, uh, anything that we could assume that may be uh, acting you know, it may be buggy or it may be acting maliciously. Um, we could further isolate that from the system. So if it does try and attack, it's still virtualized and isolated from the rest of the host system and any other containers running on it. Um, so that was the original purpose of K-Run. Um, and with this, we could help, you know, it can help thwart numerous container escape attacks because on top of that, it would need to escape out of the virtual machine in order to do some real damage to the host system. Um, so if you see that diagram there, it's basically that we run uh, inside the container context, a virtual machine. Um, and that uh, the virtual machine ha basically runs the workload of the container. Um, and just an introduction on uh, confidential computing. Uh, if you think about data protection technologies, uh, we have storage encryption, which protects data at rest. Network encryption protects data in transit. And confidential computing protects data in use. Uh, and by in use, we refer to the CPU registers, caches, and RAM that that... Uh, that application uses. And this is implemented using trusted execution environments, which are basically a virtualization extension to the CPU that allows for encrypting a guest VM, CPU, and RAM from the host hypervisor. So not even someone with hypervisor privileges can read this memory of uh, the virtual machine. And by extension, since the hypervisor can't, nobody else on the system can. Um, and this is basically done by the hypervisor tagging guest VM memory pages uh, to be encrypted when it's launching a virtual machine. Um, so if you see there, the just kind of a diagram, the VM's RAM uh, is protected from the rest of the system. Um, and one important note here, because it's, uh, it's relevant to how we build containers and how we run them for confidential computing is a, is a notion called VM attestation. Um, because we trust the hypervisor to encrypt these pages to be uh, confidential, we have to trust that the hypervisor actually did so. It could lie to us and say that you're running confidentially when you're really not. So to be sure, we have to attest, uh, which basically means we have to cryptographically prove that we're running confidentially. Um, and this is done in conjunction with a server, a remote server somewhere else that I'll explain in a moment, but we have to work in conjunction with that server to prove that we're actually running confidentially. Um, and this is done by what's known as an attestation report from the secure processor. Each uh, uh, trusted execution environment architecture uh, from whatever uh, chip supplier you can think of supplies something known as an attestation report that is used to prove that you're running confidentially. Um, and the two main components of that is we verify that the hardware is actually uh, uh, confidential hardware, um, which, you know, that prevents the host from lying about our application running confidentially. And then the software, uh, we verify the software, um, basically that our entire application environment and only our application environment is included in the VM. This can prevent attacks such that we've encrypted your pages um, and those pages are confidential. However, we mapped some extra pages uh, unencrypted. So for something, say a GDB server, for example, could be used to then spy on the encrypted pages because it's uh, technically part of that VM's address space. So we could then use that to spy on your system. So that's how we attest. We need to attest the hardware and the software. Um, and although attestation is not required to run confidentially, it should be thought of as required because it's essential. Um, it's the way that we prove that we're running confidentially, and that's the only way we can trust that we are. Um, 
So if we think about container images for confidential computing, uh, some of the questions we may ask is how can we build container images specifically with confidential computing in mind? Uh, can we build them such that attestation from the VM is required for running the container? Uh, you know, although it's not required, can we make it required? Um, and can we, exist, can we leverage existing container image builders to do this for us? There's a lot of good projects out there. Let's not reinvent the wheel if we don't have to. Um, and can we make this as simple as possible? So one component we use to do this is Builda. Uh, Builda is just a tool for building OCI container images. Um, two new features that we uh, introduced to Builda is in one subcommand, the main subcommand of Builda, uh, introduced a flag known as CW, which stands for Confidential Workload. And it's a basically builds the container image a bit differently. I'll go into details on how it's different, but it builds the OCI images specifically with Krun VM attestation in mind. Um, and then there's also a new subcommand to build a called MKCW, which make confidential workload, which takes an existing container image that you've already built and converts it into a confidential workload image. <clears throat> Uh, both of these commands build confidential uh, workload images, and they also register build information with an attestation server. So what is a confidential workload image? Uh, so one thing right now, at least at present, uh, while I'm speaking, it's expected to be run with the K-Run runtime. This is not a hard requirement. Others can uh, build stuff to make it run as well. But there's two main components. Um, there's a root disk, uh, which contains your application code and data. And that is Lux encrypted with a key stored in an attestation server that we've, uh, is running remotely somewhere. Um, and then there's a data disk which just contains the data needed for attestation, such as the URL of the remote server that you need to communicate with. And since that application is encrypted in the root disk and you need to unlock the root disk, attestation is required for running this workload. It's a way we're able to force attestation. So if a confidential workload is being run, it's already assumed that it's been attested and, that you, and thus you can trust it. Um, and the registration part with attestation servers, uh, Builder basically measures each VM component that will be used to run the workload and computes a hash of the, right now we measure Qboot, the kernel that you're gonna run your VM with, the init RD, et cetera, and it's going to uh, compute an expected measurement. Uh, so basically what's going to happen is when the VM eventually goes to a test, it's going to compare its uh, actual launch measurement that, it, uh, that is part of its attestation report. It's going to uh, compare that with the expected launch measurement. Um, and that's how we verify the software of the VM. Uh, if these two measurements don't, um, if they're not uh, the same, then it either means that not all of your pages were encrypted or that attack that I mentioned before where some extra pages were encrypted on the side uh, that's a possibility if you're, either of those is a possibility and both of those are uh, unacceptable. So um, your attestation will fail if these uh, measurements don't um, match up. And then the URL of the attestation server is inserted into the uh, data disk so we can then attest. So now that we have these confidential workload images, um, how can we run them? And specifically, some of the questions we could ask is, uh, how can we use existing container runtimes to do this at a station, unlock the root disk, run the container's contents virtualized? <clears throat> can we hide all of this from the user such that it's completely transparent? They're just, they think they're just running a, a normal uh, container. And, and you know, further than that, can we hide the fact that it's running virtualized? So we want this to uh, be seamless as possible and that you're just running regular containers. So the first component, what we use as a base, is uh, known as C-Run. Um, it's just a, it's a fast, low memory footprint OCI runtime. It's just your standard uh, OCI runtime. One important notion, though, is that it's written in C, and you'll see why that's important in a moment. Um, the next uh, component is known as libkrun. Uh, libkrun can be thought of as a virtual machine monitor as a library. So it uh, brings a C API to run processes in a KVM virtual machine. Um, just processes. Libkrun alone will run your uh, processes in KVM virtual machine. And it integrates a hypervisor solely for the code you're running virtualized. Uh, that is, the hypervisor only manages the libkrun VM you create. So every time you uh, run a process virtualized with libkrun, there's a virtual machine monitor that's just, uh, is specifically, um, its specific purpose is to run your process virtualized. Um, all libkrun VMs are micro VMs, as I noted before, they run 
processes virtualized with the minimal amount of emulated devices, um, which allows us to get a much lower memory footprint than standard VMs. And it abstracts most of the complexity that comes from VM management. So we, with libkrun, we tried to uh, make it very similar to just running processes on the hardware as you normally would. Instead, they're uh, virtualized in the KVM uh, virtual machine. Um, so what is krun, the krun runtime? It's the C run runtime using the libkrun C API to virtualize the container's contents. Uh, and you can think of it as a virtual machine inside of a container context. Uh, the container orchestration software would communicate with CRUN. CRUN would then, in turn, use the libkrun API to manage the underlying virtual machine. Um, on the right here, I'm going back, just, you can see the uh, libkrun API, a few of the uh, uh, API functions you can call. You can set a virtual machine config, you know, the number of CPUs, the amount of RAM. You can set the root disk, add a virt IOFS device. All of this is available through the API, so that's what CRUN uses when it and it communicates with the orchestration software to then communicate with that virtual machine. So that's what the krun runtime is. It's the C run runtime as a base calling into the libkrun C API to manage a virtual machine. Um, and here you can see a, a comparison to just normal C run um, and a host running krun. So they, it's, it's very similar until you get inside the actual container. Um, C run uses the libkrun API constructs a micro VM around that container just to isolate its, uh, uh, isolate its contents. So some of the trade-offs with krun. Uh, on the positive side, you have VM isolation for potentially malicious or buggy workloads with a near zero performance decrease because when you're running under KVM, um, you're running directly on the hardware as if you were some normal process. Um, one drawback is that it's, it's tough to share resources or tougher to share resources with uh, processes, other containers outside of the krun VM because it is virtualized. There is some uh, uh, challenges there with sharing resources and sharing uh, uh, memory and such. And with krun, you have the ability to take advantage of CPU trusted execution environments since uh, trusted execution environments are a virtualization uh, con um, construct. <clears throat> So if we think about how krun does the attestation, we have those uh, container images, and now we need to attest them. Um, as I noted before, each architecture allows a guest to request an attestation report from the secure processor. The attestation report, uh, report um, contains launch measurements, identification information, anything you need to do to prove, anything uh, data that you need available to prove that you're running confidentially. Um, so what krun basically does is it fetches and reads the uh, attestation, uh, it fetches the attestation report and reads the uh, server URL that you need to communicate with from the data disk. It then sends, it serializes that attestation report and sends it over to the uh, uh, attestation server. Um, and it'll expect a return back. If it, the attestation server successfully attests, um, it'll return with the lux passphrase to unlock the root disk and begin running the application. Um, so that's how we're able to force attestation. Uh, we only store the root disk password on the attestation server. In order to get that, you need to uh, attest your, uh, your virtual machine. Um, <clears throat> I can't go into much detail at the moment because it's a huge uh, topic, but I'll go into the very basics on how we attest the hardware and the software of the, with the attestation server. So <clears throat> at this point, our guest has sent over an attestation report and now the attestation server has it and now needs to uh, validate it to see if it's, if it's able to send the root disk back. Um, so the first thing to do is the hardware validation. Uh, and that's basically, we're verifying that we're running the authentic, unauthentic hardware from the chip supplier. Uh, each attestation report contains a signature that can be traced back to the chip supplier's root of trust. So for an example, on the right here, I give uh, uh, SEV SMP from AMD. You can trace the, at the very bottom there, the attestation report signature. You can trace that all the way back up to AMD's root key, and that's how you're, you, you're able to trace that back to AMD's root of trust. Um, and is, if you can verify this certificate chain, then you can verify that you're running on an authentic SEV SMP uh, processor. Your virtual machine is encrypted with SEV SMP. Um, so with this, the host can't lie about running confidentially. Um, after that, now that you know that you have a... Uh, uh, 
verified attestation report. If you recall, when we built the container image with build a build CW, we previously registered an expected launch measurement with the attestation server. Uh, now that we authenticated the attestation report, it contains all the a hash of all the components encrypted by the secure processor. This is the actual launch measurement. Um, and we must compare the two. If they're not equal, we know, like I mentioned before, that either not all the VM pages were encrypted by the secure processor, and, or some extra pages were mapped into VM guest memory. Uh, either of these options are unacceptable, basically, and they may jeopardize the confidentiality of the workload. So the attestation fails if it's expected uh, and actual launch measurements don't match. Um, if they do match, though, uh, the attestation server can then send the Lux passphrase back to the virtual machine, and the VM can then use the Lux passphrase to unlock the root disk and begin running its application. And in that sense, we've cryptographically proven that our workload and only our workload is running confidentially on the host system. Um, so that's how we're able to kind of build uh, OCI images with confidential computing in mind and then force attestation in our uh, container runtime to run them. Um, so just a quick demo of how this works. On the, on the uh, bottom left here, we have just a simple web server that's going to uh, it has a passphrase. If you see um, on there, the passphrase is open sesame. And that's a secret that's stored in plain text memory. So if we run this confidentially, that string should be stored in read-only memory. And thus, if you dump the process's contents, you should be able to read that string. But if it's ru running confidentially, it'll be encrypted, so you can't run anything. So as I said before, too, what we're going to check is that the uh, expected launch measurement and the actual launch measurement are equal, so that's what we're specifying there in uh, OPA format. We're just checking those measurements on the same. On the right here, I have a confident, I have an attestation server running. So we call Builda, and we specify with CW. Now on the right here, we just built that uh, OCI uh, container image. On the right here, though, you see the, we've registered that we want to check the uh, expected and actual launch measurements. And then on the reference values there, we've computed that expected launch measurement. And then on the retrievable resources, we have a passphrase. That's the Lux passphrase to our, um, our root disk. So that's everything needed to uh, attest with. And we then uh, built that image. So now what we'll do is we'll run uh, with Podman, we'll run that container image um, with the K run runtime, as you notice, we'll name it uh, CPD for container plumbing days. And we'll run, remember it's a web server, so we'll run it on port 8080. So what just happened on the right there? Uh, if you see uh, the VM basically started with the K run runtime, it uh, injected and measured each memory region with libk run and then it started the micro VM. Uh, now when it's inside the micro VM, the first thing that it needs to do is a test. Uh, so on the right here, it sent over its attestation report and you can see begin attestation there on the right. It detected the trusted execution environment to be SEV SMP. And then the first thing it needs to do is validate that hardware. So if you see, that's known as the endorser in attestation terms. So it goes and uh, goes to that certificate chain and uh, finds out that it's running on trusted hardware, and it computes something known as a freshness hash that's uh, just something to make sure that it's not doctored in any way. And then we do the evidence appraisal, which compares the expected launch measurement to the actual launch measurement, um, and we see that that's true. So we see that the attestation was successful. And then the VM can then run, uh, go to fetch the resource, which was the root, uh, the root passphrase, the Lux passphrase to the root disk. And it seems that it searched for it, it found it, and it's going to send it back to the virtual machine. And the virtual machine was then able to unlock the root disk and mount it, as you see, mounting a Lux root file system. It was able to mount it, unlock it, and mount it. And if you see on the top left here, so we have this container running, uh, virtualized, and we wanna know, it's a web server again, so we wanna know the port that it's running on. We see that it's running on 33627. So we'll just reach out to that server and have it run. 
So it replied back with the passphrase is open sesame, uh, nothing special there. But what it's able to tell us is that the virtual machine itself is able to read its own memory. So even though it's encrypted, it has the key. The virtual machine's running, so it has the key to, uh, uh, to get that memory. And then from the host, we'll dump the process that's running that virtual machine. We'll dump its um, contents into a file, and we'll, we'll use GDB to do that. We'll dump its contents to a file. And then we'll grep for the password in that file. We're not able to find it. Um, the reason we're not able to find it is, of course, because it's encrypted. Uh, for the sake of time, um, you can take my word that if it wasn't running encrypted, we would be able to read that passphrase. Um, but we're not because it's encrypted. Any questions? I don't know how much time I have. I have about five minutes. Okay. Is there any questions? Yeah, so just out of curiosity, uh, so the file has integrated with Azure and it's quite familiar with the abilities. Uh, what are the abilities or capabilities that would see when approached, especially given the... Oh. Go there. <laughs> at this point, but... right. So I expected a question about Kata, so my next slide I just wrote was that this is the basic... <laughs> I expected this, so... Uh, um, I wasn't going to flip this if it wasn't asked, but I knew it was going to be. So if you kind of look at uh, K-Run versus Kata Containers, uh, how uh, K -Run, Kata Containers' is top level is QMU, which is acting as the VMM. So you're basically running containers inside of a VM, um, inside of a, VM a, a common VM for all your um, containers. And with K-Run, you're basically running uh, a one-to-one -one mapping of containers to VM. The trade-offs between the two is that Kata Containers has... Uh, Kata Containers is more broadly supported right now. It supports most container workloads. It's built on mature components, QMU. And it, ha it gives a private environment between all containers in the same pod, which is not something that K-Run offers. Uh, K-Run's basic advantage right now is that it's simpler. There's fewer moving pieces involved. And it doesn't need to grow and shrink the VM because it only virtualizes your uh, container's contents. Uh, and it has, because we're able to kind of isolate down to the workload level, um, there's a smaller attack surface and lower memory footprint. Um, but that's the basic difference between K-Run and Kata at the moment, and, and that's the advantages of the, uh, and disadvantages of the two. Any other questions? One second. Uh, so as you mentioned, like for Kata containers, they have a single VM for each pod, and for K-Run, you have a virtual, a virtual machine for each container. So even you have a even, uh, smaller service, uh, attack surface, but you have to handle all the uh, informa uh, information communication between two yeah. containers in the pod, right? Like network that's namespace, PID sharing, like how to address this abilities, which can be provided by a single VM for each pod. Yeah, that's so. right. So we did, like I said, that's also, I guess that'd be, say, a, a, an advantage to Kata and a drawback to K-Run is that with Kata, because you're running all those uh, containers in the same uh, context, it's much easier to share, um, which K-Run doesn't offer right now. So advantages and disadvantages to the two. Is there any performance implication to all this K-Run stuff? Performance implications? Very negligible. Implications of like, uh, in terms of computing speed? With, so uh, just running um, K-Run without confidential computing? No, not really. Uh, you're running KVM. It's at the very bottom layer. It's KVM. So you're, running, you're still running your workload on the hardware. For confidential computing, there is a slight, um, because every memory access is, has to go through an encryption and a decryption for your VM, there is a slight memory, uh, I'm sorry, a performance um, decrease, I think, but that's the trade-off with, uh, that's specific to confidential computing and, and trusted execution environments, less about the K-Run runtime. Um, with the K-Run runtime, not really, but with confidential computing, yeah. And with the confidential computing, uh, what happens during that period of time when it's decrypted? Sure. So how it basically encrypts this memory's contents is there's a secure processor, and that's managing who's accessing this memory. So every time that virtual machine, the secure processor makes sure that whoever's, that every time that virtual machine reads from memory, it, decrypt, it decrypts the memory, and every time it writes to memory, it encrypts the memory. That happens at every memory read and write. So there's a 
extra uh, encryption and decryption. So we decrypt when we read, we encrypt when we write, and that's how we're able to maintain. And the keys to encryption and decryption are stored on the secure processor, and the secure processor makes sure that only the VM can. Mm. At that point, it, you're just uh, uh, basically relying on hardware to yep. take care of that. Basically, device. yep. You're relying on hardware. It's, it's completely transparent to this. You're relying on, solely on the chip and the secure processor to do that for you. Thank you. Yep. Sweet. Uh, I think that's it for time. So we uh, will move on to the next one. Sure. But um, I'm available if anybody else has any questions. Just, just feel free. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you. Um, next up, we have.